I think we'll get started. We're all ready to go here. Feel free to get a drink. We've got some wonderful things planned. We want to welcome you to the eighth annual Power of the Purse. I'm going to ask my fellow panelists maybe to give you a wave and then uh, maybe turn off their videos because we're going to do a couple of fun things and they're going to join us again for, for words throughout this evening. But I want to welcome you to the eighth annual Power of the Purse. My name's Joe Bauman. I'm actually your host for this afternoon and evening for a little happy hour here at the Power of the Purse. I was the MC last year in person, which frankly is a whole lot easier than doing it here virtually uh, from, as you can see from my background, the 2018 Power of the Purse, John Catlin over my, uh, my left shoulder, I believe. Uh, yeah, I think, he, nope, he's over there, he's over my right shoulder uh, from 2018, helping out selling tickets. We won't be able to do that tonight, and that's too bad. We're meeting for the first time in an online setting, and that's not quite as much fun. I will tell you, as being my second year, the, the first time I was with you all and the, the excitement of the, the purse event, I'm not a purse person myself, but uh, to be there in that excitement and what was going on and uh, having a cocktail and a wonderful meal with everybody and then a wonderful live auction was fantastic. I did, however, dress up for tonight. As you'll see from our panelists, we did as well, and maybe you did. I am, uh, for, for pandemic purposes, here up top, I am appropriately formal, but I can assure you that down below, it is all pandemic appropriate. Only shorts and short socks here. So uh, you have at least half of a tuxedo for you tonight. And even though the in-person event was canceled this year due to pandemic concerns, the Munson Healthcare Foundations, together with the Power of the Purse Planning Committee, felt it was really important for our donor and sponsor community to gather together in a virtual space here today to celebrate the legacy of this event. More than ever, we need to celebrate our communities and our milestones. So tonight, it is all about celebration. For the next hour, we invite you to sit back, enjoy a cocktail or two, or maybe three. We're gonna do a toast at the end and listen to some of our wonderful speakers who will share a bit more about the impact that this event and you all, both in person and by your sponsorships, have had and continue to have on our local community and our Cadillac Hospital. It's all thanks to you our generous and loyal donors and sponsors and visitors and attendees. Now, before I turn it over to the speakers, our wonderful panelists that you'll see tonight, we have something special. The committee wanted to take a stroll back down memory lane, the first seven years of this event, and developed a video to show how this has grown, how your presence, how your dollars, how your commitment has impacted the community around you. So we've got a fun, four and a half minute video to share with all of you. And so just as a reminder, if you haven't already done so, this might be a good time to grab a drink for the toast later in the evening. I might uh, refill mine, in fact, as I, I joined a little earlier, so I'm a little ahead of you. So grab a drink for the toast, and when we reconvene after the video, we'll hear from Melissa Schultz, the chair of the Power of the Purse Committee. And now, let's take a look back through the years.
Wow. Can you guys see me? Um, that was awesome. Uh, look how much we have grown over the years. And it was amazing to, to see all those pictures of wonderful women in our community, great supporters of the Cadillac Hospital. And uh, I think some of those handbags might be in my closet. Um, I just wanted to, to say that thank you all for watching from home tonight. Um, at uh, the last count, we had about 65 people who registered. Um, it's kind of hard to get everybody to be on the screen at the same time. Um, but I just um, definitely want to want to thank you. And it doesn't surprise me one bit that you guys were still willing to participate, even if it was in a virtual realm. Um, before I move on, um, I get the honor of presenting the first gift this evening, the first job prize of the evening. And everybody who registered was put into a drawing. And, um, and this wonderful beach themed basket that I have here, um, it actually has a towel, a fun pillow, has some wine, some wine glasses, flip flops, sunglasses. Um, this was uh, donated by Deb Ballard and Donna Willis from Chemical Bank. Um, they are wonderful supporters of the community in addition to that they are also um, they are also big uh, members of our committee we couldn't do this without them so thank you very much for that and it is an honor to announce that the winner of this is Sue Hurlbert you um, network reporting has been a big sponsor of this Searles, Sue has been involved and participated the last few years I know and congratulations we are excited you can contact us we're gonna um, give you an email and you can contact us on how to pick this up um, next year, we're going to be fast forwarding into the uh, 2020s um, in 2021. So we're going to roar into the 20s. As you can see from our theme, we're going to kind of share that throughout tonight's night. Um, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Melissa Schultz, and I'm the chair of the Power of the Purse Committee. Um, just let you all know that it was a very difficult decision to make to cancel the in-person event this year and we were very saddened to have to do that but as we continue to maneuver uh, during this pandemic our focus has definitely been on the safety and the well-being of our community and um, of course all of you so please know that we are already in process of planning for next year uh, the 2021 event and that we're looking forward to celebrating with you all in person next year. Um, I have been involved with the Power of the Purse for the last three years and I look forward to um, seeing if we have a little differences that get thrown in because of the culture um, that this pandemic is throwing on us but um, I am hopeful that we will all be able to get together celebrate and um, have an even bigger and better event next year. So um, I also wanted to take a minute and I wanted to talk to you all about why this event matters to me so much and it matters so much to our community. Um, we all have women in our lives that are very special and very important to us, whether that's mothers, sisters, um, aunts, uncle, or not uncles, aunts, um, <laughs> wives of your uncles. Um, but we just, we just know that there are people that we want to make sure that can be taken care of right here and that they, the friends and our neighbors that are facing challenges can do so right here in our Cadillac community. So we need to make sure that we have viable treatment options and that we have viable functioning hospital here um, to provide those critical services and those treatments that are, are necessary. Um, it's important to our industry so that we can keep a vibrant community. Um, and even though we are small, Cadillac has proven time and time again to be a small but mighty community. And it's amazing. Um, I'm always amazed at what we can do. The few can make such large things happen. Um, so we, we, we appreciate that we appreciate your support. So um, in, a different, in addition, I just want you to know that it makes me proud that you guys are all willing to still participate on this level. Um, I'm excited to see what next year um, has to bring and I'm excited to finish celebrating with you all here tonight. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Tanya Smith and she's gonna be, discuss, um, be discussing some ways that this event has impacted the Cadillac Hospital now and will and can in the future. Thank you, Melissa. I'm so happy to be here with everyone tonight. Um, I have been in Cadillac now for five and a half years, and um, it's really surprising to me that I have been here this long. Um, it seems like it was just yesterday that I moved to the Cadillac community, and now it has really just become such a wonderful home to me and my family. And when I first got to the Cadillac community and I heard about Power of the Purse, 
I really didn't know um, what to expect. I'd heard there were purses and it was a fundraiser and it was a big happy event. Um, and it sounded great, but I didn't really understand what it was until I had the opportunity to go to Power of the Purse for the first time and experience what it was like all around me to have that many women from our community come together on one night to make a difference for the health care of other women in our community and to keep our local health care strong and our hospital strong and have the best equipment and services that we can for the women that we care so much about. Just like Melissa uh, mentioned, all those special women in our lives and what they mean to us. Uh, and so I think once I was there and I experienced just the positive atmosphere and, you know, the the purses that were everywhere. And I'm watching that video thinking, I remember that purse uh, and I wish I would have bid on it uh, because there was just so many choices to make. And what I think about most with Power of the Purse is even though we have changed over the years and evolved and brought in different brands of purses and we filled them with different things um, or we've changed up one year we modeled um, that I was in it we modeled clothing from local stores and then the next time I was in it we didn't model clothing from local stores we just modeled our purses don't worry we weren't naked uh, we had clothes they just weren't modeled clothes from local stores and it was just such a wonderful experience how we have changed it year over year. Uh, what I do know is that what remains constant with Power of the Purse, even though we continue to evolve the event, even like tonight having it virtually, what remains the same for all of us is the impact that we make together for Cadillac Hospital through this event and the power of women in our community who come together and identify needs that we have at our hospital that we can make an impact on other women in the community and that hasn't changed and what i think was really special when i was at power of the purse events in person was even though we were all really excited about the purses we were buying and the raffle tickets and all of those things we all knew every dollar was going to our hospital. And that's why we cared so much to be there. And that's why we bought raffle tickets and we bid on purses. And we had such a wonderful time together and why it's such a positive event. The financial impact and the difference it's made in our hospital cannot be minimized. Uh, we've raised through this event more than $191,000 through Power of the Purse. And using those dollars, we've been able to buy equipment for urologic procedures for women. We've been able to support our cardiac rehab program. And we know that cardiac health is one of the most important ways we can make a difference for women because it's our leading cause of death for women. So we want to really be able to pay attention to those needs that women have. And we've also used the money to support our family birth center so that moms in our community can feel really good about coming to our hospital and knowing that their newborns will get really exceptional high quality care because we've made a difference for all of them through our donations. So the impact to Cadillac Hospital, the impact to our community and to our fellow women cannot be really understated um, as it comes to our power of the purse. And even though this is a fantastic event that we all love so much, um, there are so many ways that you all make a difference and make an impact for our hospital. And there are so many ways to give to continue to support us. And I really do look forward to the next Power of the, Aper Power of the Purse event that I can be with all of you and women like these behind me in this amazing photo of uh, what Power of the Purse is when we all come together uh, to support our local hospital, to support our fellow women and to take care of each other. So I'm so grateful to all of you for being on tonight, all of the attendees, everyone who is participating, just like Melissa said, even when we can't be together, you're still signing on at five o'clock in the afternoon and spending an hour of your time with us and we could not be more grateful. I have the opportunity to introduce our next speaker, and that's Dr. Alicia Elmore. Uh, Dr. Elmore serves on our Hospital Foundation Board and is such an important part of our medical community here in Cadillac and our greater community and has made such a difference for uh, overall health and wellness in the Cadillac area and also for women. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to welcome her to tonight's event and introduce her to all of you. Hello, everyone. 
So I am uh, so glad to see so many people here tonight and just so grateful for everything that everyone does for our local hospital. Um, I wanted to speak tonight about uh, patient impact, like how the money that is given to the hospital here locally, um, how I see it impact my patients in particular and people I take care of. But first I wanted to talk a little bit about how I grew up and um, how my ideas of the hospital and what it means to a small community have been formed. Uh, I grew up in the small town of Saranac, Michigan. It's a town of about 3,000. I don't think that uh, population has changed much over the last 50 years. And uh, for our local town, we did not have a hospital close by. Um, we had a small community hospital that was about 12 miles in the next town of Ionia. And that hospital um, was just so important to us over the years. And I saw how it impacted even uh, some of my friends growing up. I know uh, this is a problem we don't really have much anymore, but one of my friends uh, developed RISE syndrome, which is a condition that when you uh, give a child aspirin and they have certain underlying uh, problems like uh, mono or other viruses, it can cause swelling of the brain. So that is why we don't give children aspirin anymore. They advise don't, they stop calling them baby aspirin and they call them you know, heart aspirin now instead of baby aspirin or 81 milligram aspirin. So um, my friend developed Rye's syndrome and uh, we didn't have an ambulance service. They took her to just the local community hospital and they were able to stabilize her, try and decrease some of the swelling in the brain until they could transport her over to Grand Rapids. And, um, you know, thinking back about that, I think, man, how many of my patients have been impacted in the same way living here in town, that uh, they have problems that if we did not have a local community hospital would surely be fatal to them. And so patients who are having a heart attack or, um, have an emergency, to have a local emergency room present is just so important in my mind. You know, even if it's something that our local community hospital can't take care of, which they can take care of many, many things. You know, if you have to have brain surgery, they probably are not going to do that here at, in Cadillac. But, um, you know, if you are having a heart attack, they can definitely save you. Um, so transitioning that over to here in Cadillac, I think about even um, my mom who has had a history of breast cancer and is 80 years old for her to have to um, travel long distances to follow up on breast cancer. Um, to one of my patients, uh, caller Avery, who uh, developed breast cancer and at the same time her husband was sick and in the hospital like just it would have been impossible for her to travel to Traverse City or Grand Rapids to undergo treatment, to undergo diagnostic imaging. And to have that kind of imaging here available and have um, specialists available and the kind of doctors that are available here that people can undergo um, further treatment is just such a blessing in my life and in my patients and in my practice. So. Um, I just want to say thank you again to each and every one of you for everything that you do to support the local hospital and uh, to support the doctors that are here. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Joe Bauman. Thank you so much, Dr. Elmore. We appreciate it very much. Appreciate your, your thoughts. And I actually know where Saranac is, having uh, worked in the legislature for a guy who represented Saranac. Very small town. You're exactly right. Uh, and you cannot uh, overstate the impact of a community hospital in a town like ours or Ionia or Saranac. And as someone who's new to the community myself or relatively new, I can tell you not while I'm not a woman and perhaps uh, gaining in the same ways that we're talking about tonight, having a community hospital and a strong one is important to me as well, both as an employer bringing people here and keeping people here. And so I'm glad to have it as they've treated me a lot over the last number of years. So I wanna thank our speakers, uh, Melissa, our chair, Power of the Purse, Tanya Smith and Dr. Elmore for sharing the impact uh, to the community of this event and your support and its importance to our hospital and local patients. To reiterate something um, Tanya mentioned earlier, 
from the inception of this event in 2013 through 2019, this event has raised nearly $200,000 for the Munson Cadillac Hospital. Those dollars have been raised because of the incredible support of people like you, the donors and sponsors and attendees in this community. Without that support, without that attendance, without those sponsors, this wouldn't be possible. The dollars that were raised to bring that equipment to this town would not exist. That support, that healthcare would not be here but for you. That's why we're here tonight. That's what we're talking about. And that's what we're sharing a drink over talking about this evening. And so right now, I'd actually love to introduce Courtney Mulder with the Munson Healthcare Foundations, who will share a bit more about our wonderful sponsors, the people like you, the folks who are here each and every year to make sure that this remains a reality. With that, I'll turn it over to Courtney. Thanks, Joe. Uh, like Joe mentioned, my name is Courtney Mulder. I am a charitable giving officer for Munson Healthcare Foundations uh, here at Cadillac Hospital. And um, I want to thank everyone uh, for joining us tonight. I greatly appreciate you being on here. Um, but I especially want to thank um, our sponsors this year. So our sponsors this year include Forefront Credit Union, Nine and Ten News, Fifth Third Bank, Schultz Emmington Insurance Agency, Farm Bureau, Vandry Home Furnishings, Mercantile Bank, Rex Air, TCF Bank, West Michigan Credit Union, and Wexford Jewelers. And I just want to note that even though this year's event this year's live event was canceled. I'm so grateful to these organizations and these businesses who um, continue to support the event. And, um, you know, in the face of adversity, um, you know, they're still here supporting the hospital and supporting women's health services here at the hospital. And so we are very grateful to all our sponsors. So once again, um, thank you for supporting Munson Healthcare. And um, now I am going to turn it over to Des Worthington, who is the president of Munson Healthcare Foundations. Thank you, Courtney. Hello, everyone. As Courtney said, I'm Des Worthington, the president of Munson Healthcare Foundations. And I'm pleased to be in the virtual company this evening with some amazing people, many of them women. I'd like to start by recognizing the volunteers and staff who've worked hard to keep the spirit of the event strong, even as we've dealt with this horrible world pandemic. A big thank you goes out to our committee, Kim Benz, Carol Burkert, Deb Ballard, she's the founding purse queen of the event, Susan Dennis, Dawn Ewald, Diana Haynes, Jen Moffitt, Jenny Johnson, Melissa Schultz, our event chair, and Donna Willis. And of course, Joe Bowman as our fearless bunny MC. There are two foundation staff members who dedicated hundreds of hours to support the committee's vision. They are Kira Walkup and Melissa and Mackenzie Weeks. We appreciate their hard work behind the scenes. And finally, I'd like to recognize Courtney, Courtney Mulder, who worked with our generous event sponsors. When we think about power of the purse, it's easy to focus on the purses, right? Usually there are several pretty ones to look at, to bid on, maybe to win. But my favorite part isn't a specific designer or is it the sparkle, although I like that part too. It's about the power of the person who holds the purse. I think about the amazing choices women make and what they choose to do with their purse power. In many ways, women have been the heart and soul of our society, often making choices to do the most important work. You all know what I mean. Women give, women volunteer, and women work in areas that may not maximize their own personal profit, but rather improve things. Whether it's educating our children, advocating for positive community change, caring for the sick, 
or enhancing the access to basic needs, such as healthcare. Women are often the primary influencer of household charitable giving. Sure, girls want to have a little fun, but they're generous too. Today is about celebrating and reflecting. You've seen a fun video and heard speakers before me talk about giving and the impact that it has to bringing innovative healthcare equipment to local healthcare communities, whether it's in Cadillac, Lake City, or even the greater Northern Michigan region. Months in Healthcare, your healthcare system takes its roles in keeping our communities safe very seriously. We know you count on us. The COVID pandemic has been nothing like we have ever seen before. In March, when the crisis hit in earnest, your healthcare system responded quickly. Leaders across Munson Healthcare, including our Tanya Smith, did nothing but work and sleep, sometimes even foregoing the sleep, to change the way we provide care so we could keep staff members and patients safe, even in the face of the unknown. And of course, frontline providers, our physicians, our nurses, and everybody else who worked at the hospital, in the EDs, in the ICUs, in every part, continue to work and care in a loving manner for our patients in extremely stressful circumstances. If dealing with providing safe care in the face of an unknown disease wasn't enough, we have been faced with equipment and PPE shortages like we have never seen before. Munson supply chain employees, including our own Carla Filkins, literally conducted worldwide searches to get supplies needed to provide ongoing care. And they continue to do this important work every hour of every day. There are many heroes walking among us, and I am proud to know many of them. Our response efforts came at a price. We spent more than a million dollars to purchase masks and other PPE that would have only cost $150,000 pre-COVID. And at the same time, we had to shut down elective surgeries, resulting into up to $10 million per month in losses. Through it all, Munson Healthcare remains committed to each and every community. It, every community, everyone that we serve in the 21 counties that we provide service in. We are committed to keeping local healthcare strong, but we cannot do it alone. We need community members like you to continue to support the work. I hope you will consider giving to keep our Cadillac strong. After the event, you'll be sent an email and a link to give to the Cadillac Hospital. I hope you'll take a moment to reflect on what access to local health care means to you, to your family, and to your community. Thank you for all you do, and thank you for your consideration. And a big cheers to the power of the purse and the women who wield it. Over to you, Joe. Well, I don't know how you follow Des on that. Uh, no script, and certainly no, none of my ad living will possibly do it justice. But well said, the power of the person holding the purse. That's fantastic. And anybody who thinks you can't put a price on quality health care, Des just did that for all of us what it has cost to keep community health care alive and well in this community for us all, men and women alike. So with all of that being said, and as important as all of that is, we didn't come here to leave with no purses. I mean, we know what this is, it's the power of the purse. I mean, it's the power of the person holding it, but there is purse involved. So now I think we come to what you've got to think is the most exciting part of tonight's event, besides my presence, of course. But instead of a live auction, which is always great, and as you saw in Courtney's picture involved Willie Repkin a number of years, the committee wanted to give everyone a chance to win. So tonight, we're gonna to have a purse raffle. I'm gonna turn it over to Deb Ballard with the Power of the Purse Committee 
who's going to make a few lucky ladies a winner tonight. Deb, take it away. Thanks, Joe. So forgive me, we've had a little bit of technical difficulty on this side. Can you see me okay? And I've got Donna stopped by, so she's here. We're at Perth Central, which would normally be bare by now, but we have 11 generous donors that have purses here for us. And we're gonna draw some names uh, and let you win those. Again, like we are doing with the basket, Tomorrow you'll get an email and we will get you um, uh, instructions on where to get your purse. So let's do it, Donna. Okay. So our first winner is getting a Kate Spade. Kate Spade comes from Tanya Smith. And Donna, who's the lucky winner? I've got Roland. Somebody with the last name of Roland, BB Phantom at charter.net. So we'll get find out who that registrant was. Congratulations. Next, we have a Dooney and Burke. So it's a Deb Ballard, really, DB. So, and that is going to go to Christy Norman. So there is Christy. Next we have a Godiva chocolate and purse basket. And this is from Absolutely Fabulous, a new resale shop over on Platte Road in the uh, Plaza with Pac Mail. And that's going to Lori Booms. Next, we have one of my favorites, which is a Kate Spade Duck. And that is going to go to Jennifer Satchel. Congratulations, Jennifer. Next, we have a Kate Spade backpack. So mom's out there, maybe one of your daughters is gonna snitch this from you. So let's see who it goes to. Mackenzie Weeks. And next we have a Dana Buckman. This came from one of our longtime supporters, Lori Booms, who just won a purse. So congratulations, Lori. Um, this is a Dana Buck Buckman. And it's going to go to... They're folded. Really good. They're folded. Chris O'Neill. We still have five to go. Thank you again for our generous donors um, that donated these for us this evening. We have a Vera Bradley tote. And we had some connections with Vera Bradley. Every year they send us two purses. And so these came in late after last year's event. And so this goes to Kim Benz. Congratulations, Kim. We have a Vera Bradley crossbody. And again, this came directly from Vera Bradley. Donna's favorite color, pink. And that is going to go to Sylvia Riser. Congratulations, Sylvia. Sylvia is another one that is an always uh, donor. She waits till the Cadillac Art Fair and gets us a beautiful leather backpack from the purse peddler. And we've gotten some beautiful colors for that. Next, we have a tote bag. And this is eco-friendly leather. And this comes from TJ Maxx. And that is going to go to Amy Peltier. Congratulations, Amy. Next, we have a Nine West. And this comes to us from Your Sister's Closet, who is a great supporter of our event and gives us a lot of our purses and accessories. And that's going to go to Tanya Scheidler. So if you're not seeing me, you're going to have a nice surprise when you do see your purse. 
And last but not least, we have a Steve Madden uh, mini crossbody with a hat and a lip gloss. This comes to us from Carol Burker, who was on our committee. And that is going to be given to Vicki Long. So Joe, I'm gonna turn this back over to you. Um, and thanks again, everybody. Thanks for your continued support of this event. We look forward to seeing you there next year. We'll be collecting purses, start doing that after the first of the year. And again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Deb. Well done. You know, for the audience watching, you may not have realized uh, it was even jankier before as we were practicing. I was glad to see Deb moving at all, and the addition of Donna was a was a real was a real ad. And so we could see a little bit, Deb. It was nice to see the purses move in and out a little bit. So uh, that's fantastic, and I know there are going to be a lot of happy folks out there who who did win something. We should have made it like you need to be present to win. You have to listen to my voice for sixty minutes. That's your cost. Uh, you don't have to pay any money. You don't have to listen to Willie Repka yell at you for a while to give more money, but you should have to listen to me. So, and have a drink with your friends, the uh, women with the purses. So uh, that was great. I think there are going to be a lot of happy folks out there. I'd like to actually at this point, welcome back our panelists. We're, we're getting close to the end. We've obviously got a lot of um, wonderful gifts out there. I'm changing my view so I can see everybody here. We're going to put a, a poll or two up just to kind of have a, a fun interaction with our attendees here. But I'm going to put it out to the uh, to the panelists and this is going to combine with the poll. So the first one we're going to send out called Purse Envy. And we're going to start with what's your favorite purse designer and your favorite purse style. I'm gonna put them together because the poll will go out at the same time. And, and I'll call you out because I've got you in order. And if I don't keep you in order, everything's gonna go anarchy. So we're gonna start with Courtney. So as I send out this poll, Courtney, what's your favorite uh, purse designer and your favorite purse style? Mm. Well, I like the classic look of Coach. And I like the, the over the shoulder style, small, easy to travel with. Also known as a crossbody, it appears from our poll. That's it, the crossbody, yep. Wonderful, all right, Melissa Schultz. Is it something Roaring Twenties? No, no, Joe, it is not something Roaring Twenties, but I do like classics. And so to be perfectly honest, um, I love all handbags, purses, I'm a big fan. Um, but I do like Louis Vuitton. I actually don't own one, but that's on my list of wants. It would be a Louis Vuitton. And I kind of like to have the ability uh, to have the kitchen sink with me. So like a hobo style. It's kind of the kind oh, of- is that a, It is an actual style. I'm not a woman, but hobo style is an actual purse style. What really need is like a crazy sack with no- It doesn't come on a stick, you know, kind of with a hanky out here. It just comes together like a little floppy bag. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Dr. Elmore, what's your favorite uh, maker, your designer, slash uh, in your style? Oh, need to unmute you here. All, All right. right. So I actually brought it with me. So I like my coach wristlets. So I have five of these and they fit my uh, phone in there and an ID and money. And I'm like, what else do you need? <laughs> well, if you're Melissa Schultz, clearly you need enough clothes to ride on some sort of train car. <laughs> well, when I had babies, you know, you needed the diapers and <laughs> you know, everything. <laughs> that That's like perfect. I just, uh, as I move on, we've got a leader in coach right now. Coach is leading our voting as well as the cross body. So before we close the poll, Tanya Smith, what's your favorite designer and style? You know, Joe, I love a Kate Spade. I'm a Kate Spade girl. Uh, and I always like totes. I don't put as much stuff in it as Melissa. So I always feel like my tote is kind of empty, but I like to have options. Um, but lately I've been wearing a lot of those little crossbody small bags because you can fit your phone in it, your credit cards, and then your hands free. Uh, so I, I kind of mix it up between those two things. Got it. Awesome. All right. Des, what about you? We've got you on mute. So 
Yeah, I have to say, um, I have four kids and I used to have to carry around a big old tote. And what I realized early on is um, I became the, uh, the mule for the family. Even my husband makes me put his, his wallet into that bag. And so um, if nothing else, I had to go to a very small bag that only fits the mama's stuff. I don't have room for anybody else's stuff. And I'm really happy for anything that's small and cute. Perfect, perfect. Now, somebody should tell me what's the difference between a tote and a hobo. Is the tote just made of plastic and you, you collapse it down or? No, it's a show. <laughs> yeah, it's a shape. Hobo is a little more round and tote is a little more. Well, leave it to our queen of purses, who we've just come to in the order. Deb, while we can't see you move, tell us, what's your favorite? And Donna, I'm interested in yours. Hobo is... Uh, Dooney and Burke, you know, I tease about the Deb Ballard. And I'm a crossbody girl. Okay. Mine would be, I would, I would mirror Tanya in the Kate Spade in the tote. All right, good choices. And Kira, if you're there, do you have a favorite yourself? Hi, I do. I do. I'm definitely a crossbody girl. Um, and I love Tori Birch, though I do not have a bag. Hint, hint. If anybody out there, you know, so chooses, they can send it my way. Well, as you can see, everybody, Coach was the runaway winner at eight out of the 20 votes here tonight and crossbody as well. So clearly we have to, we need to keep the coach around. And I think we heard from Melissa, we need to add in some, uh, Louis V, I believe was uh, your choice. Either that or I'll just talk to Curtis this weekend. We'll see what we can get taken care of. Yes, please do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome, that was fantastic. Thank you panelists and thank you everybody for, for joining in, in that particular poll. We, uh, we expect to see some of those designers. Hopefully the committee has written down what you're all looking for so that they can be responsive next year. And speaking of next year, the ninth annual Power of the Purse, God willing we have a vaccine and or an appropriate treatment to make sure we can all get out of our houses and not be looking at 2018 John Catlin over my shoulder here and actually get together again and have a drink and have a wonderful meal and enjoy the company of each other and spend a lot of great money on great purses. Next year, Roaring Twenties, August 19th, 2021. Put it on your calendar right now. I don't want to I can see you. Make sure you write it down. You've got a little Palm Pilot or something or, you know, an old calendar style on the wall, whatever it is. August 19th, 2021. We look forward to being with you in person in the old style, maybe out of Cherry Grove. So we don't, you just don't have to look at me on this little square here. And I'll actually wear pants. I promise I'll have full pants on. So I know I speak for the committee and the Munson Healthcare Foundations team when I say we're really looking forward to being in person with you again, to seeing the end of this, to seeing the future of community healthcare in our community and its continuance. And with that, I've got one more poll and our toast. So one poll tonight, and this is the one that I find really most important, is what's in your glass? So you've got a number of options here. So we've got a toast uh, that's going to happen in a moment. And I, I, I couldn't pick just one. So I, I, um, there's no law when you've got the claw, I'm told. So I, I, I picked up a few um, different options here. Um, I, I may toast with all of them. So, oh, we got white wine running away and with gin and tonic. That is a good choice. Four of you are really smart people. Gin and tonic and white wine are moving it. Oh, they're t oh, water juice or coffee? Also a decent option, especially since it's only 5.50 in the evening. And we started just before five o'clock or so. Oh, and somebody didn't know this was a, a drinking event. Drinks, who said anything about drinks? Next time I'll let you know and we'll come in. I'll bring you one, in fact. I'll buy it for you at the bar when we're all together on August 19th, 2021. We're gonna end that poll right now. Juice, water, or coffee wins seven folks. If you need an IPA, I'd be glad to bring it to you. So that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. So 
let's all raise a glass. We're all here for a reason, and that's community health care for the power of the, the women and the person holding the purse. And that's what we've come together tonight. We're gonna make sure you can see my drink. To our loyal supporters, donors, and attendees, thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for caring. Thank you for your time and your money and your effort. Because without you, who knows what this would all look like. So let's raise a glass to this year still being here and next year being together again. Cheers. 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 Well, team, we even finished a little early. I hope you'll enjoy the nine minutes that I've given you back in your evening. Enjoy the evening. Thank you so much for being here. Go outside, enjoy the sun, because it's going to be cold soon. And soon, much too soon, it's going to be next August, and we'll all be drinking together. Cheers to all of you, and cheers to the Cadillac Foundations and the Power of the Purse. Thanks for having me. I'm Joe Bauman. We'll see you next year.